Good morning or good evening, depending upon where you are. This is Gloria Taylor Brown, and this is a special edition of A Gathering of Priestesses. We're so delighted to have our first transatlantic guest, uh, Miss Kathy Jones from uh, Glastonbury, England, and she is the founder, creator, princess, diva of the Goddess Conference. Uh, some of you may know her from some of her books and her work, but she's, you know, I'm just so excited that she's going to be on and, and we've managed to figure out a time that would work for us. And I uh, thank you all of you for listening wherever you are whenever it is and i'd like to introduce you to kathy jones hi there, there. hi there <laughs> uh, so we always start with the same question what drew you on to the path of a priestess ah uh, i have thought about this in uh, many times over my life i now uh, i my answer now is kind of different to how it would be 20 years ago or 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Now I kind of see, um, I have always been a priestess. I, I am a priestess returned from a thousand years ago or 3000 years ago, 5,000 years ago. I am one of those many returning priestesses and uh, this is something that I have experienced and I truly believe this to be true, that we are, many of us, returning priestesses, coming back again after, you know, lifetimes of forgetting. We are incarnating to be priestesses in the present, in, in this time. Um, when I, when I was born, when I did incarnate, I, I knew nothing about priestessing. Uh, consciously and I didn't until probably about the age of 30 uh, which is now quite a long time ago um, because I, I had always been in my life I'd always been like a spiritual seeker but I had I knew nothing about goddess because my spirituality was all in the he him and his um, because goddess did not exist she you know she she did not exist so my my awakening really came through um, feminism. Feminism woke me up and the failure of uh, a relationship. Ah, yeah. so you were an adult by that time. I was an adult. I was in my late 20s. Um, I had been living up a mountain for five years, uh, mostly on my own doing meditation um, following uh, what is kind of the Western mystery tradition mm -hmm. and uh, particularly studying uh, Alice Bailey. Uh, she was, uh, you know, someone that I really um, spent a lot of time trying to understand her teachings. And um, I had found in, I, I was living in Wales um, in a farmhouse on my own. And I had found a kind of uh, a place of great peace and, um, and joy. Um, and then I moved to Glastonbury from Wales. And uh, I fell in love with an unsuitable man uh, after not falling in love for many years. Uh, mm. Fell in love with an unsuitable man. And then everything that I thought, all the blissful places that I had reached, they made not, not a blind bit of difference uh, to the, the disaster of this relationship. So I thought, well, what was the point of all that if it didn't make a difference in the place that I needed it to make? You know, when it, if it made no difference in my love relationships, uh, what was the point? So I decided to just let it all go. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, um, we began to hold here in Glastonbury, we, the women's group, uh, that was just a circle of women. This is in the late uh, 1970s, mm -hmm. a circle of women gathering together to talk about how it was for us to be young women. Mostly we were young women. Um, and we would meet every two weeks 
to discuss how it was. And we, at that time, the, the focus was the seven demands of the women's liberation movement, which was, you know, um, contraception on demand, abortion on demand, all those kind of things that were there. And um, it would be the empowering um, journey with this group of women. And I think for all of us, we experienced how great it was to meet in a circle, to listen to each other. So this was kind of the early days of women sitting together in circles and listening to each other and, and sharing our experiences as women. So it was really, really great. And, for, um, and out of that, um, at the time as well, I am, you may have heard of Greenham Common, which was a uh, a nuclear air base that they were trying to bring in nuclear missiles from America into Britain. And it was a women's protest camp at Greenham. And lots of people, lots of women went from all over the country to live at Greenham. And at that time, Glastonbury was a particularly small town. And there weren't that many of us living here. Um, but for one of the actions, uh, you know, we took two coach loads of women uh, up to take part in this action, which was called Embrace the Base, which was when uh, uh, women held hands around 20 miles of the perimeter fence of the base. And uh, the, the thing that I most kind of remember from that time was of standing, going to one of the actions there, and standing in the woods outside this air base. And on the inside were, was kind of uh, chain link fencing, barbed wire, policemen, then soldiers without guns, then soldiers with guns, all around these weapons of death, these silos in the middle protecting these silos. And, uh, and there we were on the outside, women, just women in the in the dusk and we began to sing uh, you can't kill the spirit she is like a mountain old and strong she goes on and on and on and that's really the first time that I remember singing of the spirit as she mm. up until that point it had been okay to uh, call, you know, Mother Earth, Mother Earth is Mother Earth, but Father Sky was all, spirit was always, you know, him. Mm -hmm. uh, and I really felt it and experienced her as spirit and the spirit that is in everything. And that's, that's the moment I really kind of remember of this, that she is the spirit that is she. Um, oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Uh, it's a great story, and I, I presume it's, it's included in some of your books. So which book would we want to read that story in? Well, um, I've written maybe eight or ten books, actually. Mm -hmm. So, And there are bits of all the stories in different ones. So the, um, the kind of the, the, I think that one is in Priestess of Avalon, Priestess of the Goddess. I, um, I remember it from Priestess of Avalon, so that was yeah. what I was thinking it was in. Yeah which is a kind of way of, you know, uh, telling, the, well, partly tells the story of my own journey with Goddess and how, how I woke up to her. And, and, I, and after that, everything kind of continued on after that. Um, and I, I feel like I have been led in my life by Goddess. And, mm -hmm. you know, to to do all the things that I do, that I do, I've just opened to her and uh, she leads me wherever I need to go, whatever that means. Oh, that's so lovely. I, I think that's a great story. And, you know, um, I think there were a lot of us that were awakening in those, those times. Yeah, I think Realizing so. who we were uh realizing we'd come here to do some pretty major work as well 
Uh, yeah. My friend Brooke Medicine Eagle says that uh, before we came down here and we were up in heaven, that there were uh, fist fights in heaven to be on this planet at this time. <laughs> so much work to do. Yes. <laughs> and um, I t then I t a consequence of Greenham really was that uh, two women from Glastonbury went to live at Greenham and uh, they left their children and they left their families to go and live in the mud. And I was very um, uh, appreciative of their, what they did. And I, I decided to write a play in appreciation of them, which at that time was based on the, on the myth of Demeter and Persephone. Mm -hmm. uh, we kind of, uh, at that time there was a very lively community in Glastonbury. Uh, centered around the Glastonbury assembly rooms, which was like a community space. And I wrote, I very quickly wrote a play that was, uh, I'd never done it before, except from, you know, when I was about 10, I'd written a play, but between then and, and 30, I hadn't written a play. Um, and we did this performance and it was very powerful for everyone. And it was very, and it involved about 40 people in the community and it was very successful. And then in the following year, I had to read goddess myths. And, and at that time, most of the goddess stories were uh, really, they, they had all been written in patriarchal times. So it was about reworking these myths to bring goddess to the fore, to find her from underneath all the rubbish, you know, and all the, uh, you know, all the uh, dismissing of goddess and her, uh, descent really and so I I be um, the next one that I read was uh, the story of Inanna the um, Queen of Heaven and in her story with um, uh, you know it was like I, I I wrote another play based around her story the following year and that also became a performance and became really successful and over the next maybe 13 years, I, every year I would do one or two plays, sacred dramas that became sacred dramas that were became embodiments of goddess, where goddess began to appear through her, through the performance. And that was uh, that was a way in which I began. And Hello, uh, Kathy. I hate to tell you this, but my technical problems have gone through to thing. We need to go out and come back in and start again. Okay. And you are totally brilliant. And uh, I just will, I'll try and get that to you, but we're going to have to, both of us are going to have to go out and come back in. Okay. So I shut down. Yeah. It is saying on my end that we're live. Yeah. yeah, the problem is my end, it's saying we're not live and the people are saying that they're just seeing a message and that the presenter hasn't started the broadcast yet. Okay, so, so I shut down you. Yeah, so we are going to start over again. And um, so just I'm going to hang up. Okay.